Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm actually going to be sharing with you how to crochet this beautiful lucky star. Okay, this is a natural pattern that's um, from the 1940s, approximately 1943 to 1944, which actually was published during the Second World War. Okay, and um, because this is a repetitive pattern, I will actually be chattering away as well and giving some reactions to the comments that I've actually received on a few of my um, my coded videos and I'm going to give you a little bit of history about the um, coding in the war. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> I'm going to put that one out of the way for the minute. I'm actually using, whoops, it's easy. Um, I'm actually using the four millimeter crochet hook, which is um, a USG6 and one of my favourite yarns which is a sparkle yarn and this is a double knitting yarn okay so to start off with you can start off with a slip knot if that's what you prefer but I'm doing my twist because that's what I prefer and uh, we need to begin with a chain of eight so that's one two three four five six seven eight and then we're going to slip stitch to join you may call that a single crochet if you're in um, the UK. And then we need to make a chain of five. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to use the double crochet if you're in the US or the treble crochet if you're in the UK. So you're going to work the stitch, which is say the double or the treble, like that. I'm sorry, my yarn's getting tangled up already. Let's get my tension back, chain two, and then work the same stitch. I'm actually um, tucking in my thread with the tail end, as I'm actually going around with this one. So that's two. We need to make sure we've got eight posts, and this first chain is actually going to start as count as a post. That's one, two, three, chain two, working into the circle. So that's number four chain two into the circle again so that's five chain two into the circle so that's number six chain two into the circle Oops. so that's number seven chain two working into the circle so that should be number eight just going to just double check so I've got one two three four five six seven eight posts chain two and then you need to slip stitch into the third chain and the easiest way to do this um, because we're actually leaving these chain twos at the top is to actually count your chain twos so you've got one chain there and that's the second chain so this one is actually the third chain and go underneath two strands and slip stitch to join so it looks something like that you can actually pull this tail end to make this circle go smaller at the end if you want to. And then we need to slip stitch into the first chain two space. Chain three, one, two, three. And this chain counts as um, a double crochet or a treble crochet. So now we're going to yarn over and we're going to make two double crochets if you're in the US or two treble crochets if you're in the UK into that same chain two space and then we're going to make two chains I just need to pull some yarn from my ball just so that it all flows nicely and then the repetitive part is we're actually now going to make three of these double crochets or treble crochets into each of these chain two spaces that's one two and three and then we're going to chain two one two and continue so we're making the three um, stitches in each of the chain two spaces all the way around and I know this one is actually quite a long pattern in one sense um, especially to do on I suppose on the video but I know that there's lo those of you that like to crochet along with me and um, 
I know that there's those of you as well that have been a little bit upset with me for actually publishing my coded work. Um, but the thing is, you need to understand how important it is, not just for me, but it's actually part of history. Um, so, um, say so this particular pattern, it was it was published in 1943 or 1944, which was during the Second World War. And during that Second World War, um, there was a man called Alan Turing, who was actually working at Bletchley House, trying to decode the Germans language and their codes to get the Enigma code to essentially there was what they was looking for was when they was going to attack um, England chain two and send over whether they was going to send over ships or planes or whatever and bombers because there was a war that was going off at that time and Alan Turing while he was um, developing his algorithms he actually came across Ada Lovelace's algorithms, what she'd created in the 1800s, chain two. And so then he created these new algorithms, which then essentially he is the person that started off the way that the computers actually work to lead to the computers that we actually use today. Um, so that you can actually be able to sit and watch me now. Okay. So we're going to chain two and now we need to slip stitch into the third chain and the third chain is right next to it because that's the top of the first of the first actual double crochet that we did or treble crochet and we're going to go into the um, stitch at the side of that the, the chain there to join together okay so you'll have something that looks like this you can rearrange these little posts so they look a little bit neater at the end and now we need to make another chain of three so it's one two three and now we're going to do we're still using the double crochet or the treble crochet and you need to make this stitch in the same place that you did the slip stitch because we're going to do increases on this row and then we need to do it into the next stitch along now the next stitch along you can see there's one loop that's sort of lifted up and then there's the other loop there you want to go underneath the second loop there so you come in underneath the two loops, so it, it just gives it that neater effect, um, the finish when you're doing it. And then into the next stitch we need to work two. So I'm going to make those two stitches there. And you'll see, because the chain is actually counting as a stitch, we've now got five. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and the previous row got three. So we're going to be going up in sequences of... Um, odd numbers as we're actually going along so we need to chain two and from now onwards what we're going to do is we're going to work two stitches in the first stitch that's one two and then we're going to work one in the middle and then we're going to work two in the end so that's one and Two, and we're always going to make the chain two in between chain two and now we're going to just repeat all the way around till we get back to the beginning so it's the two stitches in the first stitch oops and one in the middle and then two into the end okay say it's just a repetitive pattern um, at this point chain two we just need to get some more yarn now so um, <clears throat> so anyway where would I got to oh yes Alan Turing now Alan Turing he actually didn't get the recognition at that time during um, the Second World War because according to my research it was still illegal to be um, a homosexual at that point in England and so he wasn't recognised and when I looked back through history I also noticed that um, Einstein because he is actually he was originally from Germany um, he was he became really famous for all of his work um, but he couldn't go back to Germany 
because he was touring at the time and, and moving around the country um, or around the world actually and he couldn't go back to his home his home country during the second world war because of his jewish background and as we know from um reading about the war um the germans actually treated the jewish people really really appallingly and still to this day, there's still after effects from all of those terrible things that happened during that time. Chain two. But the thing to me was, is that you've got um, Ada Lovelace. Uh, you've got, uh, she was a female in the 1800s. In the 1800s, at the time that she was actually doing all of her research and all, all of her algorithms, the lady wasn't allowed to even go in the library at that time. So all of those people, they was facing diverse conditions, but they still tried and they still made an effort and they all contributed. So you'd got Ada Lovelace with Charles Babbage, Chain 2. You'd got um, Alan Turing with his algorithms and you actually had Einstein with his mathematical knowledge and his scientific knowledge, which was all important to actually all lead towards the actual computers that we actually use today. And prior to that, as I said before, you've got William Lee, who actually invented what is known as the stocking frame or the knitting machine. Um, but he actually invented the bearded needle. The bearded needle is actually a hooked shaped needle. So his actual machine wasn't really a knitting machine, it was actually a crochet machine. And so, um, and then from his machine that he made in the 1500s <laughs> that developed into the 1800s into the lace making machine and from the lace making machine um, the way that it was programmed to actually do everything with the cards those cards were used in the 1800s to be able to make um, Charles Babbage's machine for his to for it being able to do all this adding up and his calculations on there with Ada Lovelace and then that led to Alan Turing being able to then use those algorithms along with his own calculations and create what is considered to be um, a father to the modern day computer okay so we've finished this round sorry I'd slip stitch into the third chain we have to do that on every round okay and so it's going to be the same again we're going to chain three one two three put two stitches into the first stitch one two remember the second stitch we need to come at a different angle just to be able to come underneath those two loops so that it sits nicely and gives a nice finish and we've got one stitch in each of these stitches so we're going to do one in there one in there one in there and then the last one we're going to put two in it so on this round we'll end up with seven stitches um, in each little group to be able to build the star. Um, just put the two stitches in there so you can see that. Okay. You can see that now, so we're actually fanning out now. And it's the same again, we have chain two in between each of these fans. And so from now on we're going to put two in the first stitch, one in each of the other ones and two in the end. Okay, so I'll just go through this one with you. So it's two in the first stitch, one in these, these next few stitches, that's one, two, there's actually three there, look, and then two in the end. And then chain two, one, two. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you've got the gist of this particular round. So it's a, it's a repetitive pattern. And that's the whole point of this with all my coded work stuff. I know that you don't understand it, the majority of you. I know that I don't truly understand all of it. But I know that I came across a pattern. A pattern inside the language, a pattern that actually works with creating a sequence, the, the form of letters, the way that I shape them. And then when you actually break them apart and rebuild them, you can actually get 
these important people that I've already mentioned. So there's William Lee, there's um, Chain 2, there's um, Ada Lovelace and um, Albert Einstein. And obviously I also showed that you could actually do it with Donald Trump's um, tweets. So I'm actually showing that it's actually still a modern version of it, of it being able to work. And I showed that you could also do it with the royal family. And you can actually do it with every single member of the royal family with all of their tweets. It's not just Clarence House. Um, but the thing was, is that when I noticed that I could do this, I thought, you know, I'm going to actually sit and do this. And I'm actually going to actually sit and experience, whoops, it's easy, experience what it was like to actually to be coding, you know, and just to put myself in in those people's shoes so that I could actually feel what it, whoops, it's easy, that's wrong there. Um, so I could actually feel what it felt like for those people I mean I know that I'm not homosexual or anything and I know I'm not facing any of that sort of conditions you know I'm lucky I'm sitting at my home I've got um, my central heating to keep me warm we you know they didn't even have central heating then um, you know and, and I bet lots of you in America have got um, air conditioning and things like that and they didn't have those sorts of things um, not for the everyday people you know conditions was hard they was on rations um, because of the the way that the trading had actually been it would wasn't working with all the different countries and we went through that our, our well I would say it's like my nana my nana was alive during um, the second world war she told me that she used to come home from work and there used to be a man that used to when the when the sirens was going off and that the you know the ready because things, you know, you'd got to take shelter. They had to turn the lights off of the bus and there used to be a man. They used to walk in front of the bus with a lantern. Um, and so that the bus used to travel, obviously, at this, the speed that this man could walk in front of the bus to be able to guide them back home. Um, and to think about that, you know, to think that my nana didn't even have a fridge at that point. She only had the coal fire. She had the one coal fire to be able to keep the um, one room warm and that was it you've got an outside toilet and and that's where like I said it's like I've I've actually tried to put myself in those positions I know I can't put myself exactly in the, in those positions because society and my life and everything obviously makes everything so much easier chain two and this is where um, I say when I actually found a pattern that was working and actually realized that whether I've actually come across something that actually is just it really is an ancient thing that's been going on since forever and we now all use this subconsciously whether it's something that I've actually managed to, just to develop because I can prove um, that other people are using it that probably don't even know that they're actually doing it um, but it's just it was one of those things where I say when I was actually le <laughs> learning, <coughs> excuse me, when I was actually researching and, search and looking for the origins of crochet, I've actually gone all the way back through history, all the way back to the caveman days. As you know, I've actually sat there um, and used old tools like the caveman tools to be able to, um, I've made myself my own crochet hooks from using those kinds of tools which was really really hard and then I've actually used more modern day tools to actually make some better versions I've searched through ancient pottery I've searched through ancient languages and that's one of the things that I noticed as well is if you look at language itself language is actually a code you know so it's like if you look back at the ancient Egyptians and so I'm just coming to the end of the round so I'll just do this bit because this round actually changes chain two we're going to slip stitch into the third chain just there now the only thing that changes on this round we're still going to do an increase but the chains actually turn into a chain three okay so we're going to chain the three to begin with one two three work the stitch in the same space that we did the slip stitch 
so we've got our two stitches there work underneath these two strands of this second stitch which was always the more awkward stitch to do and then we do one in each of these remaining stitches till we get to the end where we put two in that stitch again so we'll just work across to here See, it's a lovely pattern to crochet and it's really easy when you know how and two in this end one okay so this time round so we went three five seven and this is should be nine now so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine <coughs> this one is one of those patterns that once you get used to it and you do it a few times you can actually um accidentally miss a stitch so it's it's best to count one two so remember doing three chains in between this time because from the next round onwards we start to reduce and that's where we need these three chains so we're still doing two at the minute in each of the beginning and the end stitches and just the one stitch in between so that we've got our nine stitches all the way across so you can count them if you want to so we've got our two and then we go three four five six seven and the two in the end eight nine okay and chain three one two three um oops daisy I'm getting a little bit of a knot forming there, sort that out. Okay, so let's go back and look at the languages because that's one of the things I did. I, I followed the languages, I went all the way back to the cuneiform language, then I went to the and then we've got the ancient hieroglyphics or the hieroglyphs, depending on how you want to say that. We've got um, what was it, Mishniak Hebrew, Hebrew on its own. Um, and then we go on to Latin and then the Latin, oh no, I'm fibbing, we actually have Greek first. So it goes Mishniak, Hebrew, Greek, Latin. The Latin then comes across over, obviously over to Europe and that's where we get um, the French and the German languages. And then eventually we get the English language. So realistically, each of those different countries and, and those places abroad was using a different language so that the other people didn't know what they were talking about. It was just a code. It's like when you're a child, one, two, three, and you learn how to use um, Pig Latin. Um, what was that? Um, Anke, Uye, A, Say, At, They, <laughs> which means, can you say that? <laughs> um you know, you learn all of those sorts of different things and you use different words all the time. And it's all forms of coding. And all the, all what I've done with my code, it, it doesn't say anything nasty. My rules are with it. There's no bad words allowed. Um, and all it reveals is, you know, you have to research. It's essentially, it's like an educational thing. You have to research whoever you believe that has actually written that piece of work and um, research them, find out the information and look for the information inside it and recreate it. And it's just essentially, I suppose, a, um, a game. One, two, three. But because it actually works all the way through history, um, like I said, I can, I can demonstrate it. It works right from the 1500s all the way to this modern day um, English that we're using today. And the people that are using... The modern equipment the twitter and um, things like that so i didn't see there was any harm in what i was actually doing um, and i know that somebody somewhere is actually going to actually find my information actually really useful to them you know i personally would like to i'd like if you could turn it into a computer based thing so it's a lot faster because obviously i'm handwriting it and it can only be done in a handwritten way but essentially, I thought that it was actually really interesting to see. Um, chain three, one, two, 
factory that the entire English language and all of the numbers, which actually are originally Arabic numbers, are all made from essentially four shapes, which is either an L shape, an O shape, a U shape, or just a straight line. And it's just the simplicity of it all. It was just, um, say, but some of those people that have actually put um, quite harsh comments like, Karen, you've got 67,000 subscribers. You know, if you want to do this, go and do it on a different channel. Well, yes, I know I want to say thank you because I've actually made it to 68,000 subscribers now. Thank you very much for all of that. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I've actually got 10 million views as well. So I'm kind of getting there. But the thing is, <clears throat> is you may say, oh, go and do it on a different channel. This is my channel. It's part of my research. One, two, three. I believe that it's relevant to my research. It was relevant to me to actually, you know, it's took me two years to be able to create what I created in those few videos. You know, and I think that two years worth of work where I've worked day in, day out. Um, and like this, I've, you know, I've, I've, I was designing all of my own crochet patterns and yes, 67,000 subscribers and you look if you put up a pattern that you've spent hours and hours and hours making and designing so it's really pretty so you've got something absolutely unique and you get 500 views on it it's really disappointing really really disappointing and you think that you go to all of that effort and I don't know if you know or not but you actually the way that it actually works with YouTube is that you actually, for those videos that are actually in front of your work or in the middle of your work, um, but those videos are the ones that actually where you get where you actually get an income from. And my income that I receive right, doesn't it doesn't even pay half of my rent for my house, right? So I'm not doing it for the money. One, two, three. Um, it's not been a case of doing it for that. It's been I've been doing it because I actually love crochet, I love history, and I wanted to do something and share something that I really, really enjoyed. And it is. Sometimes when I sit there and I think, you know, my viewers are only interested in booties and cardigans because that's where most of my views are. The rest of the time, all my other work that I've done, I may as well have just sat on my backside and done nothing because it was not it's not been worth it. But I tried, and that's the whole point of this. So if you want to say something mean to me, and you say, oh, well, I don't mean it really like I'm being mean. Well, if you've got some harsh words to say and you want me to take it on my chin, you know, think about it. Think about my feelings at the end of the day. And think about seeing it from other people's perspectives, because that's what a lot of people are guilty of not doing. One, two, three. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch into this third chain. And I don't mean to sound like I'm being horrible because I know that, you know, a lot of you like, the, oh, you don't mean it. But like when you're saying that you're concerned for my my well-being and my welfare, then maybe you should just sit and watch the adverts in between and think about that. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. But I'm just a little bit annoyed that people can... I've split my yarn as well now. <laughs> So there you go, look, that's what you get from being a little bit. I'm just going to undo that and do that one again. Um, but I've actually made a huge, huge effort. Okay, um, I'm 28 minutes in, <clears throat> right? So I know at this point your, your work is going to look something like this. And I'm not sure that I can actually carry on and keep recording for the entirety of this. I might actually have to like stop the video and break it up and do it in a part two or something um but from this point onwards we're actually going to start reducing so chain three two three oh no i'm fibbing you don't need to chain three at all there and <laughs> we're reducing ignore that bit slip stitch into the next space <laughs> there we go we're reducing now chain three one two three and now we're going to just work one stitch in each of the stitches across so we've got one two three
four, five, and six stitches because we're not going to work into the end one. Now remember, the actual chain three counts as a stitch, so that actually makes it seven. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. On this round, we're going to make a chain three. One, two, three. And we're going to do a single crochet over this chain or a double crochet over the chain if you're in um, England. And then chain three. One, two, three. We're going to skip this first stitch, make the double crochet or the treble crochet in the next stitch and in the next six stitches so that we actually create another row um, of seven on the top now. So let's say we're going to actually be reducing. Um, I'm saying I'm not sure. My camera might cut out on me because I'm not sure how long I can actually crochet for all in one go. And to be fair, um, it's probably best to break it up into two videos. So I'm going to do this round and um, and hopefully you'll just see things just a little bit differently. One, two, three. And try and see things from my perspective that I was trying to search through everything. One, two, three. While I was looking for the origins of crochet. I never ever in a million years expected that I would come across being able to see letters in 8,600 year old tortoiseshell fossils. That was just one of those really bizarre moments that happened in my life. And I never really ever expected that I actually was going to be able to find all the things that I have found. But because I have found all of those things and um, I can demonstrate how it actually works. One, two, three. I actually can also do it in different languages. One, two, three. Now I don't speak the other languages, okay? But if I've got, um, what I've done is I've actually used old patents because therefore you can just say, you know, I had nothing to do with those. I didn't, you know, things that I felt it was safe to use. It was like, it was an old patent. It was nothing to do with me. You can't say that I've actually designed it or I've written it or I've had anything to do with it. The same as like me using other people's tweets and names of their titles of whatever they've created. Um, but I actually use some old Spanish patents and then actually use my coded format to actually reveal English messages and that's the bit where I feel that this crochet code as I'm calling it one two three actually has some significance and it say it could just be my active imagination one two three that lets me see these things but like my mum said if it wasn't there you wouldn't be able to see it and that's the whole point of coding is that well, these code breakers, if it, and it's true, if it's not there, you can't see it. So for me to be able to find authors, names and authors of books in English, there was English books, the, and even where they was actually published, the date that they was actually published, and to find those inside old Spanish patents, makes me wonder because obviously like i said before um in our ancient history well not even ancient history really one two three in our history women weren't allowed to go into the libraries in the 1800s one two three and you it was illegal for you to be um a homosexual so that would mean that if you was um a female and you was lesbian, then that was also illegal. So it made me wonder, were these patents done in this way? Because when I look at the patents as well, it's like I actually think, why on earth would they patent an English thing in Spanish 10 years before it was actually even going to be used? It just didn't make sense. But then as I actually looked at the historical things and went along, they actually created a new pattern. 
one, two, three. So, to me, like I said, I think, two, three, that I actually have stumbled across something that can just, I say, if it's some form of, of way of actually being able to create a patent for somebody, when theoretically they wouldn't have been allowed to because of their religion, because of their sexuality or whatever, um, maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But I know that these things are there and that I can read them. And like I said, in if nothing else, and it was just turned into a game, I think that that would be really nice. So, um, and yes, <laughs> I understand for me to be actually sharing with sharing with you, one, two, three, something that's took me two years to create and to build upon, two, three, it is confusing because you haven't seen where it actually started from and how it all actually worked. And, um, <clears throat> but I don't know. There was something. It's like that. I don't know. Have you ever had those? You must have had those things where you just feel like it's a sign something it's a sign from above that is it's like you felt you feel like you're being guided from something that's beyond you and I feel like that I felt like that when I felt I needed to publish those videos when I did I felt like I was being guided from somewhere else from something else that I can't truly explain and yes maybe it does sound all a little bit weird and maybe like you want to say oh that's it she's a fruit loop she needs to go in a nutty farm well that'd be another reason why i wouldn't be allowed to do things in the ancient days wouldn't it in the 1800s one two three you show any sign of having any kind of disturbed thought process one two three and this one we're going to actually slip stitch into the third chain um, yeah, if he had any kind of disturbed thought process in the 1800s, according to Freud and um, Jung, it was all because of his sexuality. <laughs> and so, um, as I said, it's all a little bit, a little bit on the weird side, if you ask me. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to do the same as we did on the previous round. We're going to slip stitch into the next space. This round changes again with the amount of change you do, Okay. So we've gone down to um, seven, have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so this time we're going to go down to five. So we're going to chain three, two, three. <clears throat> work one stitch in each of the stitches, but we're not going to work in the end stitch. So that makes our two stitches, because I'm counting the chain. Three. My video is doing really well. I'm expecting it to pack in on me at any point. So if it does, if it just does randomly stop, then what I'll do is I will wait for it to um, have enough power or cool down, because depending on which thing has gone wrong. Um, now we need to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then this row, we're going to do a single crochet at the side of the single crochet. So in that chain, or a double crochet if you're in the UK. And then we're going to work a single crochet into the single crochet, and then another one at the side of it there. Okay, chain four. One, two, three, four. Skipping the first stitch because we're doing the, redu we're doing the reduction reductions. <laughs> I've got tongue in a twist there. And we're going to work across these stitches here. And remember, we're going to not work in the end stitch because we're actually reducing down so that we've actually got five stitches in each of the groups there. So chain four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do single crochet at the side of that one or double crochet one into the actual single crochet from previously, one at the other side of it, chain four, one, two, three, four, I need some more yarn, and then we're going to skip the first stitch, working into this one, okay, I hope you've been able to follow along while I've been babbling along. But I had so many things that went off in my brain when I got these negative comments, which I think, you know, I did. 
I got 67,000 subscribers and barely had a negative comment. I put up a code and woohoo, I've got more thumbs down than I've ever had in all of my videos <laughs> and more negative comments because you wasn't understanding me. One, two, three, four. And I didn't mean to deliberately confuse you. Like I said, I felt like I was... I don't know. All of this. One, two, three, four. Somehow, somewhere, some way, it's going to be significant. Maybe one day, you know, like in the future, it could be like, I could be like Alan Turing and Anita Lovelace and... Um, and all of a sudden it's like it'll become important something that I've done will become relevant to somebody in the future but at the end of the day I just felt I had to share it and um, I actually enjoy doing the coding work I think I'd be kind of good at a job like that um, <clears throat> one, two, three, four I'd probably get paid a lot more money than I do on YouTube, that's for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, um, one, two, three, four. I'm still surprised that my video is still going. Because <laughs> I know we've still got quite a few more rows to go. So, um, <clears throat> I say, if it ends up having to be part two and part two ends up only being like a smaller video then please look, I'll, I'll try and keep the same title um, and then just have like part two next to it um, or it'll be a very, very similar title because um, I like to be creative with my titles. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four. But I think that my creativity with my titles is one of those things that makes sure that I actually don't get as many views maybe because... Um, but I don't know, because it's like I did. I, I sat there. You know, if I just type in crochet star. One, two, three, four. And just use those two words. It's amazing how many videos come up. So, um, should I have how to crochet a star? Should I have crochet lucky star? I, I think I'm going to have the lucky star. Because that's what this was actually called in the book. It, um it's bizarre and it's a, it's a shame as well that I'm actually crocheting a pattern from somebody that I can't even tell you the author of this pattern because it was done during the war and it just seems such a shame. One, two, three, four. That somebody was there sitting crocheting these lucky stars while their loved ones was off at war, being blown up to bits in places. One, two, three, four, some of them to ever never return home. Those that did return home had mental problems and flashbacks and all sorts of traumas to have to deal with and even the modern day wars that they've had, you know. People have that, you have that post-traumatic stress syndrome and all the mental things that they have to deal with and Actually, talking to mental things, I even read about that, which I thought was really sad. Um, one, two, three, four. Was that um, none of the celebrities wanted to support Prince William's um, charity to do with mental health? Um, and mental health actually has um, a big significance to me. One two three because my mum is actually bipolar so right from being brand new baby um i had to deal with um my mum's illness that wasn't even diagnosed at that time she didn't even know that she even had it no one gave her a diagnosis until oh crikey I don't know how old she would have been. She would have been in her 50s, I think. One, two, three, four. Um, and it's a shame, you know, because my mum could have had a lot more support in her life. It's even now. She doesn't get the support that you feel that she should need. One, two, three, four. 
and we're going to um, slip stitch into the third chain oh my video it's still going <laughs> and we get in there I'll say this is the longest video I've ever recorded all in one go um, I suppose before I say because I've always been fearful that it's just going to pack in on me so right so now we need to slip stitch into the next stitch because once again we're actually doing a reduction so we do the chain of three one two three and then we need to work in these next two stitches one two and this time round say if it packs in at this point don't worry because I'll try and do a thing where I catch up but we now we need to make a chain of five one two three four five and now we need to do a single crochet or a double crochet if you're in the UK at the side of these stitches work one in each of the three stitches so we're actually going to end up with five single crochet or five double crochet here so we're doing those three stitches and then we do one into the chain work at the other side okay and that's going to create us like a little v here chain five one two three four five and now we need to skip the first stitch work in the middle three one two three I think if Prince William asked me if I would actually help with this um, like with being able to do something of being able to talk about dealing with bipolar not obviously I'm not that I've got it but because of my mum one two three four five <clears throat> I would um, but I'm not glamorous enough to be on the telly that's why I do my videos this way around because I'm um, I'm one of those people that um, I'd be picked on by the tabloids. It's like, ew, look at her, she's really ugly. She's fat, she's this, she's that, she's the other. And I couldn't deal with none of that. One, two, three, four, five. You know, they'd pick up on all of my imperfections and take really, really gross photos and splash them all over the headlines I don't know how the royals cope with though, all that tabloid stuff I just don't hats off to them hats off to all the celebrities that put up with all of that um, one two three four five it's definitely not my idea of having a nice time um, you know being criticized like that but maybe that's one of the reasons why the celebrities don't want to join in is because they're actually, because there is that fear factor of the mentality stuff that the British stiff upper lip, we don't talk about things like that. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously, except in the 1800s when it was like, it's because of your sexuality or it's because of your lack of sex that you are mentally disturbed and then they lock you in an asylum and electrocute you. Um and give you weirdo drug stinking that it would make you be okay one two three four five when realistically people that have got unless they're being violent and being horrible because it's like if my mum gets like into one of those kinds of states it's like yep yeah, stand back um it's very rare that that happens but um most of the time my mum just needs just to talk one two three four five and she forgets so we have these repetitive conversations where she'll tell me things and she'll tell me the same things that she told me a couple of days before um she'll tell me stories from her childhood that she's told me a hundred thousand times probably um but then like there'll be things where she's not told me something and it'll be something brand new one two three four Five, and I just love her so much for that um, you know and we do we have these amazing conversations because actually mum even though that my mum does have whoops a day so I've got myself stuck even though that she does have things wrong with her she does have majority of the time she's you know quite normal um, well I don't know really what you would actually even say normal really is but um, yeah she has her normal days <laughs> and most of the time 
it's she's normal one two three four five and as much as she has difficulties with all sorts of different things she actually can understand my coded work um and i love her to bits for that because she she's encouraged me one two three four five and um, because she's like me she likes to see things that you you you've got that openness that you know it's like we do we talk about do aliens really exist you know did we actually all originate from a different planet did um you know is there some kind of you know like we are now we're searching for another planet that we could actually be able to live on was there another hang on i just need to count one two three four five is there another um an, another land another planet out there that we all came from like say but we're looking for a planet but did they look for a planet you know or are we um are we all actually really just a computer program you know there's all sorts of possibilities when you think about it um so you never know one two three four five but we do we like to look at we like to be out of the box thinkers and be open and look at all sorts of um different things and we talk about anything and everything um and she's just my best friend she really is and i think that i'm really privileged one two three four five to actually have um somebody like that in my life that actually you know that it, it's that way where you need that you know it's like like she i don't know she needs me for her things it's like when she's having one of her breakdown moments one two three four five or when she feels like the one's coming along we have an agreement so she can just phone me up and she can just say hey i'm having these strange feelings i'm having this strange thing and whatever else and and that's where i just say hey it's okay mom it's okay you know just talk away and i will sit and i will listen to her tell me about whatever has happened one two three four five that will make that feel like that she's actually going to have a bad day okay so now we've got to this point what are we 52 minutes in oh actually i don't know how this video is actually managing to do it <laughs> right so now we need to slip stitch into the next one we've nearly made it yay <laughs> okay um, now we're going to do a cluster stitch at this point so we're going to do chain three two three if my video packs in hopefully i can get this one stitch in you need to do the same thing all the way around right so you're going to yarn over go into the same stitch yarn over pull through like you're going to make your double crochet or your treble crochet pull through two strands and leave that on your hook yarn over again like you're going to make another one go into that stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the two whoops so you've got three strands on your hook yarn over and pull through all three from now on we need to make a chain of six one two three four five six we're doing the single crochet so we're doing one at the side of these stitches just like before this is the last time we're doing this and then we're going to work into these stitches here so there's one two three four five stitches that you actually work into and then you're going to do another one at the other side to make so it matches so you've ended up with a total of seven stitches across there make a chain of six one two three four five six and now we're going to work the complete cluster so we yarn over into the middle stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over into the same stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over into there pull through the two and you'll have your four stitches yes i know i've got a bit of a big gap there but i'm not going to stop it because i'm on my video and it's already over time 
So yarn over, pull through all four stitches. Okay, and when it's done, it's not that bad anyway. So chain six. One, two, three, four, five, woo, <laughs> five, six. And then we're going to do single crochet at this side, or it's a double crochet for you in the UK. And then single crochet into all of these, or double crochet into all of these stitches all the way across here. I say, once you know how to do this, it's so easy and it's so pretty. I know I'm doing it in yarn, but obviously um, in the 1940s, it was actually done in cotton. And it would have been done on a, on a smaller hook. I was nearly going to say needle then. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're making the cluster in the top. Yes, yeah, so it would have been done on a smaller hook with some fine... Um, cotton and um, was actually made like a, as a doily they did actually also have because um, I'm not showing you the entirety of it they did also have some extra bits to go around the edges to be able to make it into um, a bit different one two three four five six um, but I didn't like it after that. So I'd crocheted it to a certain point and then it started to annoy me because it wasn't symmetrical anymore and I didn't like it. And so, um, and then you had to sew it all together anyway to like join it together. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Um, if I'm going to join my pieces together, I'd much rather crochet them together. So I thought I'm going to share with you the prettiest part so that you can actually make yourself, um, you can turn it, you can make it obviously as doily. One, two, three four five six let's say even in even just in the um in the in the yarn it's just lovely i was thinking maybe you can like make it into you now if you put them together make two of them together you can make yourself um, a nice little cushion or something but more than anything it was because um the relevance of it um, and I am, I've got, I've got a book with, I've got all these patterns from this same, you know, that was all made and published during the war. So I'm actually going to be working and trying to learn how to do somebody else's work again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully with the next one, it's actually going to be one that we can actually um, build it up into a really pretty blanket, but I've got to sit and work with it first and, and see how it, it all actually works. And um, it's like this one. I did notice there was one mistake that I came across in this actual pattern. Um, but I'm not knocking whoever did, you know, whoever wrote it, you know, good on them. Because I know when it's, um, you just count one, two, three, four, five, six. I know that when it comes to um, writing your work down, when you've actually done all of the designing, it's so easy to miss out one little bit. Um, and there they go, the critics like, me, 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 me. And it's like, oh, for goodness sake. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, we're all different. None of us are perfect. Even those people that think that they're perfect or even people that think that, oh, they look like they're perfect. The person that's supposed to be perfect will know that they are not perfect and that they have little bits about themselves that they know they're not entirely happy with. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's those ones as well, aren't there? Those beautiful, beautiful people. They decide that they need to go and have Botox, boob jobs, you name it. Go and have it sorted out because it's not perfect. So, yeah. I'd rather be my imperfect self. One, two, three, four, five, six definitely not um in the public limelight because oh i say i know that they, they'd be critical but at the end of the day 
they're only doing it because they want to earn some money and sell their newspapers or sell their magazines or whatever they're not kind and generous like people like us crocheters that give things away for nothing and like even even the book i was actually quite appalled really but at the same time it was a really good bargain um one two three four five six Oh my gosh, I've actually crocheted for a whole hour on one video. I can't believe it. And we've still got one more row to go. <laughs> it's like, will we make it? Um, I don't know. Um, two and three. But yeah. Um, I forgot what I was saying now. It's gone out of my head. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I think I was on about tabloids and stuff one time. Oh, no, I wasn't. I was on about my book. Yeah, my book. My book that I got with my 1940s patterns in it from the wall. Um, I know it was, it was, re it was, what it was, it was a book where all of the patterns were that from the 1940s, or well, from particularly 1943 and 1944, uh, was all put together in a little book. And I got the book for a penny. One, two, three four five six yes one english pence so my mom said you couldn't even buy sweet for that these days um and realistically that's what i say is people don't appreciate crochet they don't value it and really crochet led to the computers <laughs> and i want the world to know that i want everybody to know that one two three four five six this humble cheapened art which um it shouldn't have been cheapened and it shouldn't have been it should be really really valued i think everybody should learn how to crochet because it's a meditative art it's helpful to the soul and here we are one two three four five six okay i'm going to be able to start on the last round if my camera packs in right i'm not going to bother as long as i can get this first little bit in <laughs> so that you can actually replay this last little bit if you need to to be able to do because it's obviously it's repetitive we need to do chain five one two three four five this is where you where your pattern changes we're doing um a treble if you're in the u.s or a double treble if you're in the UK. Count back. It's easy to count back. Go one, two, three, four. So you're into the middle stitch. And work. We actually need to work. The, we're going to work four of these trebles. We're going to have a chain two. One, two. So you're going to get a treble or a double treble into the same stitch. There. So that's two. This makes it. Oh, I forgot to do the chain two. I'm trying to rush. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Undo that. Chain two. Put this stitch in. I shouldn't rush, but I just want to make sure it's in. One, two, three. Chain two. So we need four of these trebles or double trebles if you're in the UK. And then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you can slip stitch into the top of the next, into the top of the cluster. Okay, your stitch is actually slightly to the right hand side of that stitch. So that's what makes you this pretty little fan here. Okay, that's not sitting right, but never mind. It does sit right when you, I'm just, it's because I'm rushing now. So chain five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm doing the treble so count four stitches so it's one two three four so anyway um what i'm going to do is say thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing just in case my video packs up on me so that you've actually got that bit in there i do appreciate you all even those people that have actually been what is it constructive criticism messages that they've put on there rather than treating it as a negative I do see that I have been confusing and that I do hope that after you've sat and listened to me while we've crocheted this, that you can actually see 
why I did what I did, to have a little bit more of understanding. I'm not expecting you to understand the code. One, two, three, four, five. I'm only expecting somebody who has got an analytical mind who thinks logically. One, two, three, four, five. Just like there is, there's those, there's, um, there's, you know, if you look at the, um, one, two, one, two, three, four, say, thinking about Ada Lovelace, Alan Turing, Albert Einstein, they was chained to, they all had, um, obviously that mathematical thing going off in their brains. They had some kind of epiphany moments, um, and things like that happened to them, from what I can gather from my research. One, two. And so it is just going to be the odd few people that actually understand the crochet code that um, I did. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm leaving it there because it's important to me. Okay? Um, I did want to do another one about it. I just wanted to actually see that I could actually, because it's it's important actually to recognise that the actual thing all begins in China. One, two, three, four, five, because that's where I actually found the symbols. Well, I didn't go to China. One, two, three, four. Um, it was the the symbols. The the symbols was found on um, ancient fossils, ancient tortoiseshell fossils in China. Um, and the Chinese, they actually believe that, that, that those symbols are the origins of writing itself. You know, it's like as in a, a language that they actually use. One, two. Um, so, and just because I saw English letters in them, um, one, two, which theoretically I shouldn't have been able to see or shouldn't have been there really because the English language wasn't finalised the, le the letters one, two, three, four, five the English letters weren't finalised until um, the late 1500s, early 1600s so realistically what I actually saw isn't even really possible in that sense so it's like an impossible code <laughs> one, two, three, four, five um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so, because we're on the very, very last round, I can't believe that I've actually managed to record for this long, not make, well, I did make a mistake. I've made a couple of mistakes, Santa, but you've seen me undo them. Um, one, two. So I'm really, really pleased. Um, it's going to take forever to upload. <laughs> I don't mind um, but it's just that I wanted to get this done because I've actually got an appointment to go to one two three four five and I don't want to be late for my appointment so it's like right get on with this do this now go to your appointment and then I can upload when I come back one two three four five um, one, two, three, four. So here we are, look, right near the very end of making this beautiful, beautiful 1940s pattern. Thinking about people that was in the war, those that were sitting at home waiting for their loved ones to come back home. One, two. Thinking about the fact that people was ridiculed for their sexuality or for their religion. One, two. And now, even in this modern day world, we still can't even talk about mental health issues. So uh, I think as a species, one, two, three, four, five. I think we've got a fair way to go yet because if aliens did come and visit us, and if they are coming to visit us, one, two, three, four, five, then they are obviously much more superior than us. One, two, three, four. 
and they'll be like they just see us as like little children I suppose in their eyes if they're that clever and then they'd say oh they're still not ready yet one two um but then again we could be completely wrong you know there might not be any aliens we might be the aliens we like I said we could have come from a different planet we could have just evolved on this planet one two three four five or we could all just be like really really microscopic really <laughs> and we could and, the, and what we see as our earth could be actually be a tiny tiny thing one two three four five um one two three four yeah there's lots and lots of possibilities and until there's actually some definite answers to say anything none of us can really know one two so i think it's good that there's people that have an open mind that um, research things. I know on YouTube, if you do research and you share it, um, as I've obviously already experienced, you know, archaeologists and people. Oh, look, we're right at the end. One, two, three, four, five. They all think that we're all crackpots. <laughs> they think that we're all, we're, we're all nutty because we actually think outside the box. <coughs> Oh, look at that. There we go. An hour and 11 minutes and 27 seconds I saw when I actually got to this point. There we go. Look, I'm just going to pull that through. There. And there you can see. So, spread it all out now because it was all screwed up while I was working. But there you go. Ta-da. I just need to pull that centre bit a little bit tighter. And so in your end. So, obviously, you're going to need... um. A wide end, a, little, a, a wide end darning needle. Shall we do that as well? See if you can fit that in. <laughs> oh, and um, I do. I just want to thank you all and appreciate the fact that you do come and watch me. And yes, I know I've got all of these thousands of subscribers. And yes, when I look at my videos, I only get a few hundred views. So what I'm going to say is my 67, 68 thousand subscribers. Could you please watch a few more of my videos? Could you actually possibly watch some of the adverts maybe? You know, like they owe me a little bit of extra cash. <laughs> or shall I be like everybody else and set up one of those Patreon things and beg? Hey, please give me some money. I'm poor. <laughs> oh. But yeah, um, no, I do appreciate you all. And I know that you all come to come and watch Crochet. And hopefully you're going to enjoy that we're actually going to do a little bit of a 1940s theme just for a while just because that's the mood that I'm in okay and um, I'm really enjoying it because these are beautiful I say they're making them out of yarn um, you can just see the absolute beauty of that I mean come on whoever actually sat and designed all of that in the first place they're as clever as me when I was sitting there doing one of, one of my some of my designs so um, I'm in the same wavelength as them aren't I so there we go thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for, <laughs> thank you for subscribing bye for now